Okay, this year is being sponsored today by, in loving memory of Father Chaim Mordechai, Mayor Ben Shmuel, by Marsha Tukaziner, Shelly Bodau, Tukaziner, Shelly Bodau, and Simi Teigman. The yacht site is the 25th of Tevet. And also the, the, the yacht site today of Avram Berkowitz's father, Yehuda, Elio Ben Yehuda, Lenin Nishmato. And there are Fu Shlaim Yehuda Chaim and Esther, Fu Shlaima. And Lahavdul Chaim Ben Rochel, Elimelech Ben Levi Yitzchak, Yaakov A Cohen Ben Gedalia Cohen, Abraham Yosef Ben Yaakov A Cohen, Tzida Ben Chaim Pesach, Yitzchak Ben Sara, Devar Bas Yitzchak, Avram Ben Mordechai David, Ruven Ben Shmuel, Shoshana Bas Ochana, Yeshua Ben Shmuel, Chana Golda Bas Yisroel, Chaim Ben Fega. Yitzchak ben Yaakov, Mordechai Netzach ben Rivka, Rochel ben Yosef, Eliezer ben Yaakov, Chaim ben Gedalia, Zam Elay ben Moshe, Chaim Elio ben Yosef Moshe, Amichai ben Yaakov ben Gedalia ben Tzvi Ruvain, Osher Shmuel Chaim ben Ephraim, Eleda Nishmatam. Today we'll be speaking about uh, does witchcraft really exist? Uh, Rambam versus the Exodus account, because according to the Exodus account, we read in the Pasha on Shabbat, it looks like the Mitzvah really did those tricks. The Mitzvah really turned water into blood, right? And they also brought up the frogs and they turned the stick into a snake. But Maimonides says it's all a fake. Maimonides said the whole thing is a fake, that the black magic doesn't exist. So how does he learn the Psukim? The Mitzvah seem to be doing black magic. So uh, how do we uh, reconcile the Rambam's account where he says that black magic, Harry Potter, it's all a fake and the account in the Torah we read yesterday where the Mitzvah did happen to do these, uh, these tricks. So if you take a look at your source sheets, the Talmud actually discusses this, whether black magic exists or not. Uh, this is from Tractate Chulin. Tractate Chulin in the source sheets. Ahi Itza, there was a certain woman, a certain witch, the wicked witch of the West, remember? Uh, what did she want to do? She wanted to, to uh, take some dust. What does sur surreptitiously mean, Chava? Surreptitiously. What? Without his knowing. Without his knowing. The rabbi, Rav Chinina, was giving a drasha. Who snuck underneath the, uh, the bench there? This witch. To try to gather some dust underneath his feet. For the purpose of what? I put a spell on you. Uh, right? It must be witchcraft. Right? So he, in the middle of the year, she thought he, he wouldn't notice, right? She's crawling underneath his uh, bench over there. Omele, he said to her, listen, lady, take all the, dust that you, all the dust that you want. Your procedure will not succeed. Why? Ain od novado. What is ain? There's a pasuk in the varim. Ain od novado. There is nothing besides him. Magic does not exist. So help yourself, lady. You can take all the dirt you want, and it won't affect me. Well, right? <laughs> so, it seems that magic does not exist, right? Only Rabbi Yochanan, but, the, but, you know, two Jews, three opinion. Rabbi Yochanan says, Lama nikra shmok shafim. Why is black magic called shafim? Shafim is an acronym. Like NYPD. Shemachishin uh, pamal yoshomala. Somehow, black magic has the power to contradict Pamalia Shomala. What does Pamalia mean? Pamalia. Family. The, in, in Hebrew, the English word family comes from the Pamalia Shomala. Somehow, black magic is able to contradict the heavenly family. Uh, what does that mean? Look at footnote 28. You see that, Yehuda? Footnote 28. Uh, the word Shafim is an acronym, FBI, CIA, Machishin Pamalya Shalmala. They contradict the he heavenly family. Okay, this indicates that sorcery can bring about someone's death even if it was not decreed by the heavenly tribunal. How does that work? Very strange, right? So, uh, so does black magic exist or doesn't it? So the Gemara answers, back in the text, the Gemara answers that what? Shani Rabbachinina, he was different because he had great degree of merit. So what does that mean? He had a great degree of merit. 
If does magic exist or not? What has it got to do with a person's merit or not? Hmm? It would have worked on other people, but not him. It would work on other people and not him. Yeah. Why is that? It would work on other people and not him. Right? So what? The Omer of Hanina ain't all done no kif it's boy A person doesn't have a bad hair day. Or a person does not stub his toe down here unless what? God decreed it from upstairs. Right? So, uh, so you see that everything is what? Is controlled by, uh, by Kodesh Baruch Hu. So how does, uh, how does uh, black magic get into the picture? Right? And how does the Rambam's denial of sorcery, uh, how come it does not conflict with the Torah's account that we read yesterday, where the magicians seem to have done the tricks? So we'll discuss that this afternoon. How does, uh, how does black magic work? Does it exist or does it not exist? So remember we said, the Rambam says there is no such thing as black magic. He said it's all a fake. And the uh, Vilna Gaon says something amazing. He says that philosophia hura made the Rama make a mistake. He says that the cursed philosophy, the Rama was so into philosophy that uh, he made a mistake. The Torah seems to uh, speak about black magic and the Talmud speaks about black magic and the Rama said it's all a fake, it's all a lie. So the Vilna Gaon says that black man, that uh, the Rama's study of philosophy made him go astray when he denied black magic, because the Torah and the Talmud seem to say clearly, Avram, that there is such a thing as what? As black magic. So it's very, the Vilna Gaon would say that about the Rambam, philosophy Ahura, the cursed philosophy made the Rambam go astray when he denied, when he denied what? Uh, the black magic. But the fact is that it looks that there is black magic. How does the Rambam learn the, the psukim in, in the Torah? Now, according to the Rambam, that he says that what the Torah says, the mitzim took water and turned into blood. So the Rambam says it's all an illusion. It's all a fake. In other words, they put a, spe um, put a spell on you. They hypnotize you. Where you think you see water, now you see blood. So the Maimonides says the Torah does say they turned the water into blood. And the Torah does say that the magicians, that part of the movie got right, Gershon. The magicians turned their sticks into snakes. Remember the movie there? So I'm calling the Maimonides, it's all a fake. It was just an optical illusion. They hypnotized the person to think that the stick is now a snake, a snake or they, that the water is now blood. But according to that, when it comes to the Mak of Kinim, it came to the uh, plague of lice that the Mitzrim could not duplicate. And they said, Ezbalakim, ah, this is not black magic, this is what? A finger of God. So Rashi quotes Chazal because black magic works through demonology. And Rashi quotes Chazal that demons do not have any koach on a creature as tiny as what? A louse. Who are you calling a louse? So therefore, they couldn't duplicate the, the uh, black magic of, of bringing up lice because demons work through, uh, the power of demonology works from Kishuv and, and it doesn't control any creature smaller than a louse. Who said that's demonology? The Rambam says that. The Rashi, Rashi in the Pasha. He says that the Koch of Tuma of witchcraft comes from Shadim where the Mitzim would contact the Shadim demons and they would do the black magic woman. But demons and black magic have no shlita, no power on a creature as small as a louse. So they couldn't duplicate it. But according to the Rambam, Chava, that the whole thing was only a fake anyway, that the whole thing was only an optical illusion, then why couldn't they duplicate Kenim? It's not real anyway. The whole thing is only what? An optical illusion. So what's the difference how small it is? Maybe. How would the Rambam learn when they, the, the Pasuk said yesterday, oh, it's the finger of God, we can't duplicate it. According to the Rambam, it's all a fake anyway. What difference is how small it is? Why shouldn't they be able to duplicate it? Maybe so we have to deal with that. Has, what? Maybe because Hashem has a limit on how much he's willing to allow these things to work. In other words, but Mani says it doesn't work at all. You hear my question? It doesn't work at all. It's all an optical illusion. So what difference is if it's as tiny as a louse? I understand. 
if it's a fake anyway, so you put a spell on me, and you think you're seeing, uh, it's really, it's not real. It's all sleight of hand according to Maimonides. So how would he learn that Pasuk? So that's what we have to try to understand and see how it works with us. How does it work? Now, the Talmud says that Sheker ain't lo raglayim. See the word Sheker, how it's spelled? The word Sheker, you don't have it on your, on your sheet, but Sheker is spelled Shin <coughs> Kuf Resh. If he doesn't have a base to stand on. Sheker ain't lo raglayim. Doesn't have a leg to stand on, right? But we see there's a lot of sheker in the world. The world is full of sheker. Just read the New York Times, right? In this world, sheker exists because people believe in it. If you believe that sheker exists, then for you, it becomes what? Real. To the extent that you believe in the lie, you're giving it power by believing in it, you believe in it, for you it becomes real. You give it the ability to exist by believing in it. If you believe in it, for you it becomes true, even though it's not true. What's the greatest example, Chava? Yaakov Avinu, for 22 years, he believed that Yosef was dead. Was Yosef dead? No. But for him, the lie became real. It became so real that the Shekhinah left him for 22 years. Why did the Shekhinah leave him for 22 years? He was mourning. But it was a lie, his son wasn't dead. But since he believed his son was dead, for him, for him it became was. real. So real that the Shekhinah left him for 22 years. So you see that if a person believes in a lie strong enough, for him it becomes what? Reality. So the Shekhinah left him, even though that he was alive, Yosef. The Shekhinah should have left him. But Yaakov believed in it, so the Shekhinah for him became what? became emet. So a person can create for himself a false reality and for him it becomes what? Well, true, yes? I have heard that that applies to Ayin uh, Harab. Oh, oh, Rivka stole my thunder. I'm sorry. Uh, sorry. She stole my thunder. I didn't know you have thunder. <laughs> thunder and lightning. That's the idea. Does Ayin Hara exist? Is Ayin Ara real, Evelyn? Well, it depends. Rivka said, if you believe in it, really believe in it, then it can exist. But if you don't pay it no mind, you don't pay it no attention, then it doesn't exist. And therefore, the Talmud says in the Sechta Sanhedrin, look how reality, you create your own reality, true or false, Rabbi Yaakov. The Mishnah says in Sanhedrin, HaKofa Betchiat HaMetim, if someone denies the resurrection of the dead, if he doesn't believe it's real, he won't be resurrected. Is that a punishment? Yeah. No, it's not a punishment. It's not a punishment. If you believe, my Rebbe explained, if you believe in the resurrection of the dead, you never really die. Because you have a reality, you're coming back to life. But if a person doesn't believe in the revival of the dead, Avram, then how could he wake up? You got to believe. Who said that? Jordan. Your belief becomes, makes it real. You believe in Tchiat HaMesim, you'll be resurrected. If you don't believe in it, then you create a reality which is a lie, but for you it's real, so you won't be resurrected. So we make Sheker real because we create a meaning for Sheker. If we believe ain't old Milvado, then of course black magic can't harm us. If we believe, like the great sage over here, Lady, you can take the dirt. For me, the only reality is what? God and the Torah. So your falsehood can't what? Hurt me. Ah. But if a person believes in falsehood, even though it's a lie, he makes it real for him. Does black magic exist? Yes. We decide. We decide. Mm. We create our own reality. I'll prove it to you. The Talmud says in Yuma 86, A person does tshuva mehava. All of the past sins that he committed becomes what? Mitzvot. Isn't that changing reality? You did a sin 29 years ago. 
you do tshuva because you love God, that sin becomes what? What? A mitzvah. The awesome power of a human being to create a new reality where you can actually turn on a veda into a mitzvah. Therefore, a bal tshuva is ahead of a tzadik omer. A bal tshuva, all of his averas become mitzvahs. So therefore, Chava, he's ahead of a bat, of a goody two-shoes. A bal tshuva stands higher, right? So you say you create a new reality for yourself by doing tshuva. Another example. A person says to a woman, Hareyat mukodeshed li, amanas shani tzadik, Afapishu Rasha Mukadeshet. It is. A person that we know is a Rasha. We know he's a Rasha. He just left the McDonald's and he's wiping the cheeseburger from his mouth. And he walks up to a woman and he says, if she agrees, I marry you on the condition that I'm a tzaddik. She's Mukadeshet if she says yes. I he just wiped his mouth with a off, from eating trefa. So the Talmud says he did tshuva in his heart. Why did he tshuva in his heart? So a person can change reality instantaneously. Five minutes ago he was what? A rasha. And now he had hero tshuva. Now automatically what? So you see a person can, re can create a new reality for himself. So a person can create, recreate himself. A person was a rasha. Five minutes later he creates himself, recreates himself. And now he's what? He's a tzaddik. And the Ramam says something amazing. How does a Baal Tshuva work? He did those terrible sins, and now all of a sudden the sin is a, is a mitzvah? The Ramam says a Baal Tshuva, Ani Acher. Veloa ish osa osa maisim. A Baal Tshuva is so far, I'm not the person that did those sins. I'm a new person. I'm a new creature. I recreated myself. So we see that halacha can create what? A new reality. I'm not the same person that did those averot, says Ma'ani Yishacher. I'm not the guy who did those averot. So the power of positive thinking, the power of tshuva, can actually change reality, change me into a different person. But why should the sins become mitzvah? Why should the sins become mitzvah? That's a very good question. Why should the sins become mitzvah? If you do tshuva mehava. If you do tshuva because you love God, the avera becomes a mitzvah. Why is that? Why should... Why? Hard to understand, right? Let me try to explain it. Because that avera that he did, as King David says, chatosi negdi tomit, that avera becomes the rocket fuel that propels the person higher and higher. If I wouldn't have done those Averot, I could coast. But because I, I did those Averot, and I feel so terrible that I upset God, my Creator, who's so good to me, so that eggs me on to do mitzvahs more and more, which I never would have done if I wouldn't have done those Averot. So those Averot become the, uh, I think it's called the cannon fodder, <coughs> not the cannon mother, Avram. The cannon fodder that propels me to heights I never would have reached without those averot. That propels me to move higher and higher because I feel so terrible and did those averot. How could I be so cruel to my creator? So since those averot are now driving the person, as King David says in Psalm 51, because of the averot, I am now getting closer to God. The best part of breaking up Maybe. is making up. I'm dating myself. The best part of breaking up is making up, right? So this is the same idea. So where was I? Where was I? A person can create a new reality for himself. When uh, God comes to Abraham and he tells him to do bris milah, it says Abraham fell on his face. The Rashi said because he was not circumcised, he couldn't stand, he couldn't stand before God. So God is coming to him, do Brit Milah. So he fell on his face. Because Rashi said he was not circumcised yet, he couldn't stand. Is this the first time that God spoke to Abraham? No. Not the first time. So how come he didn't fall on his face before? He was uncircumcised nine years ago also. And he didn't fall on his face. He didn't know that Be because there was no reality of circumcised versus uncircumcised. Right. Only when God is about to tell him now, Brit Milah, God is creating a new reality of circumcised versus what? Uncircumcised. Now he can't stand. 
because he's uncircumcised. But yesterday, it didn't matter because there was no reality circumcised versus uncircumcised. So we see that a person can create a new reality for himself. Positive of what? Or negative. Incredible. Nega. A person, Leilani, has a nega in his house, right? So he's supposed to say, even though, even though he knows that, that the nega is, is what? Contagious, and everything in the house becomes defiled, he's supposed to say, ke nega. What does ke nega mean? It look, looks like a nega. But not, I, he knows for sure it's a nega. So, so Rashi says, even though he's a chacham and he knows it's a nega, he shouldn't say it. Because then everything in the house becomes what, Tomei? Eh? He should say, Kenega. It looks like it. The Cohen will come and tell him what? Hire a U-Haul truck and get all your furniture out. Yeah. And then the Cohen will say, Yonatan, oh, it's a nega. The whole house is defiled. What are you playing games? The guy's a chacham. He knows it's what? That it's a nega. So the whole house should be defiled. He's supposed to say, no, Ken nega. It's not a real nega yet. Give me a chance to hire a U-Haul truck and get my stuff out. So what do you see, Evelyn? You see that we create our own reality. Is it a nega or isn't a nega? You make the call. Remember the umpire in baseball? You're not safe, you're not out until what? He makes the call, right? So he says, Ken nega. So a person creates for himself reality, positive or negative, by giving it meaning, by believing in it. For him it becomes what? Real. So the Rambam says that what? That uh, Kishuv, black magic, it's all a fake. It's all a fake. So how come they couldn't duplicate? How come they couldn't duplicate the Kinim? If it's all a fake anyway, why couldn't they duplicate the lice? And how could the Rambam deny what the Torah seems to say, that they did the black magic? And the Talmud is full of stories of what? Of demons and demonology. So Rav Hutner Zatzal, he wants to fa'em for the Rambam. Let me say it in English, fa'em for the Rambam. Of course black magic existed. The Talmud is full of stories of black magic. And that's why the, uh, the magicians couldn't duplicate the Kenan, because they were really using black magic. But once the Rambam came and says that black magic doesn't exist, Chava, he, he, he ruled it out of existence. He nullified it. He nullified it. You hear that, Rav Hutner? Halacha creates a new reality. Of course black magic existed in times of the Exodus and in the Talmud. But once the Rambam came and said that it's a fake, it doesn't exist, the demons had to take a powder, Zizel. The demons had to take a powder. Because why? Because the Rambam ruled you don't exist, get out of here. You don't exist, get out of here. Right? He ruled there are no demons, which works through black magic, so they cease to exist. So the Rambam ruled the demons out of existence. So we see that halacha can actually what? Change facts on the ground. Halacha can change facts on the ground. That's what Rav Hutner explains there was black magic. Once the Rambam came along and what and ruled that it doesn't exist, he ruled them out of existence. So they, he ruled them out of existence, right? So they didn't take a powder; they disappeared. They disappeared because he ruled them out. But if you believe, if a person believes in demonology, then for him, he's giving them back their reality. Right. If you believe in a Ouija board and all that nonsense, or in witchcraft, it must be witchcraft then you're giving it a reality, and for that person, Leilainu becomes real. Beware the awesome power of a human being to create reality, positive or what? Or negative. Or negative. Right? Now, Sheker, my Reverend Rapam Zatzal said, Sheker is like a giant balloon. You ever see a big balloon? Right? It looks like a giant building, but it's full of hot air. You ever see that they blow up these uh, castles in the sky? where the kids jump on. It looks like it's a huge castle, right, Mickey? Is it? It's full of hot air. Once you let the air out, it what? It collapses. That's how Sheker is. That's how Sheker is. So, Sheker exists. Falsehood, black magic exists to the extent that we let them exist. The same thing is when you get angry at a person. You get angry at a person 
So for you, that, that um, offense becomes something real. You're obsessed by it. Another person might laugh it off. So he said this to me. He said that to me. So you can become angry and become how to get up here that you can laugh it off and ignore it. So by becoming angry, you are causing that offense to exist. If you ignore it, it goes away. Incredible story. You can Google this, Yehuda. This is from uh, 60 years ago. I think it was in Haaretz. A sick person went to the Chazonish. And he told him, the doctor said, you have a fatal lung disease. You have to go to Switzerland to get an operation. There is no cure for you in, in Eretz Israel. You have to go to Switzerland, Chutzlaretz, to treat it. If you remain here in Eretz Israel, you'll die of this fatal lung disease. So he went to ask the Chazonish, should he leave Eretz Israel and go to Chutzlaretz to get treatment for his fatal lung disease? There's a growth in the lungs, and the doctors told him here in Israel, this is 60 years ago about, there's no cure, you have to go to Chutzlaretz. So he went to ask the Chazonish, should he go? And he described the illness to the Chazonish, the fatal lung disease that he had. So the Chazonish told him, don't go. Chazonish never went to medical school, Yuda. He said, don't go. He said, if you leave and go to Shmutz Loretz, you'll die. If you remain here, it'll clear up by itself and what, and you'll live. The man stayed, and guess what? No. It cleared up. The, the disease in the lung cleared up and he got cured. So, uh, you know, the, the, the doctors at the, the Tel Aviv hospital, they were amazed. What is this man, a Novi? Who is this? Chazoyin Ishte? He went to medical school. What are you, a Novi, a prophet? He says, I'm not a prophet, I'm not a doctor. But his halacha, his uh, problem that he had with his lung disease is very similar to Gemur and Chulin, that if an animal has this fatal lung disease, which is similar to this person's sickness, the Talmud and Chulin debates if the animal is a trefa or not. You know what a trefa means? If an animal has a fatal lung disease and you shecht it, oh, you and you shecht it, but if it could not have lived 12 months with this disease, it's a trefa anyway, even though you shechted it kosher. And when you shechted, the animal is still alive, but you examine the lungs. Here is Yonatan. You see, it's a fatal disease. So even though you shechted it kosher, if it could not have lived 12 months, the animal's trefer anyway. So, so, if the animal can live with the disease for more than a year, it's kosher. If it can't live with this disease for less than a year, then it's a trefer even though you shechted it kosher. So, this disease that this person has, says the Chazon Hish, is very similar to the Machlokas HaPoskim, whether an animal with this disease in the lungs, whether it's a trefer or not. It's Machlokas between the Ramah and the Beis Yosef. Here it is. You can Google this. I think it's in the Haaret 60 years ago. Machlokas Beit Yosef the Ramah. Now the Beis Yosef lived where? In Eretz Yisrael, right? He was the Polsik in Eretz Yisrael, lived in Tzvas, right? The Shechonor the Beit Yosef. He's the Maran over here. So in Eretz Yisrael, he's the Polsik, the, the Beis Yosef is. So the Chazayi says, I recognize that this guy's problem with the lung disease is identical to the whether it's a tray for or not. The Beis Yosef ruled that this fatal lung disease that this guy has, which is like an animal's lung disease, right? The Beis Yosef Paskin said what? That it's kosher. It's not a fatal disease. It's not a fatal disease. But the Ramah, who's the post in Chutz Loretz? The Ramah. The Ramah ruled that what? That it's trefa. So the Chazoyni says, I'm not a doctor, but in, in how does God paskin? According to, According to what we paskin down here, right? Lova Shemayim He. The Torah is not in heaven. We decide the halacha. So it says the Chazoyinish, incredible. If you remain in Eretz Yisrael, who's the post in Eretz Yisrael? The Beis Yosef. He ruled that your lung disease is not fatal. So you will survive. Because halacha creates reality. But if you go to Chutzlaretz in Switzerland, who's the post in Chutzlaretz? The Ramah. 
And he ruled that your disease is what? Fatal. fatal. If you go to Chutzlar, you'll die. Because there are more paskin that you have a fatal disease. But the Bez Yosef paskin that your disease is not fatal. It will clear up by itself. But the post here is the Bez Yosef. So therefore you have to remain here and guess what? Live. He lived. If he would have gone to Chutzlar, he would have died. Because the halacha follows the Bez Yosef in Eretz Yisrael. Chutzlar, the halacha follows the Ramah. So this is an actual case that halacha creates what? Reality. A reality. So therefore, in Eretz Yisrael, he remained alive. Chutzlar is to be a trefa. Reality is shaped by halacha. The Beis Yosef has halachas here, Eretz Yisrael. Chutzlar is halachas of Ramah. So therefore, the man stayed here and he lived. Because the Beis Yosef ruled that this disease can clear up by itself. Wow. So since he ruled it's not fatal, it wasn't fatal. The Chaim Velazhen says, the Mishnah says, Da mala mala mimcha. Know what's above you. Chaim Velazhen says, Da mala mala, comma. If you want to know what God rules above, mimcha. It is Da mala mala mimcha. What's reality? What does God say? What's reality? Chava, mimcha. The Mishnah of you have to know where to put the commas. Da mala mala mimcha. Reality is created mimcha from you. Now, how halacha creates a new reality. You can get the Magid Meshorim. It's been translated into English, Yehuda. Magid Meshorim is a diary that the Bez Yosef kept every Friday night. A malach would come. An angelic being would come and learn Kabbalah with the Bez Yosef and Svat. And he kept a diary. It's been translated into English. It's called the Magid Meshorim. The, the Bez Yosef uh, learning with this, this angelic being Friday night. And much of Shabbos he would write it down. And when, it, when he died, his wife published the book. It's called Magid Meshorim. So in there, there's an amazing conversation between the Malach and Bez Yosef. There was a big machlokis, what else is new, between the Bez Yosef and the Ramah. They're both contemporaries. Bez Yosef lived where? In Svast, and Ramah lived where? In Krakow, Poland. Krakow, Poland. What happened as follows. This woman was in Aguna for many years. For many years she was in Aguna. And she couldn't take it. Her husband disappeared. How many years can he be in Aguna? He went to the Beis Yosef, she went to the Beis Yosef in Tzfat. Beis Yosef sat down with the Bez and ruled, I'm sorry, lady, you're an Ashes Ish, we, can, we cannot help you. You're an Ashes Ish, we cannot release you, you can't get married. Your husband never came back, it's a tragedy, Nebuch, but as far as we know, you're still what? A married woman. Yiddish? But she didn't like that, because she had a boyfriend. How, how many years can you stay uh, celibate, you know? So she went to Krakow in those days to take a boat from Tzvat to Krakow. How many years, how many did it take, Diesel? No way allowed, from Tzvat to Krakow. What, two weeks, right? She went to the Ramah. And she did the whole fact, my husband disappeared, right? So the Ramah was done, and he released her. He said, your husband is dead, Mazel Tov get married so the Bez Yosef was very disappointed news traveled even though no internet Yehuda from Bez from Tzfas to Krakow you know the news came that she got another psak and the Bez and the Ramor released her claiming that the husband was what? dead, dead. so the Bez Yosef asked the angelic being you can you can see, translate to English who was right? was I right? That she's an Asian she's still a married woman, or was the Ramor right? That the husband is dead. You know what the Malach said? You were right. She's still a married woman, the husband still was alive somewhere. But once the Ramor overruled you, because who's the post that can crack out? Yeah. Not you, the Ramor. Once he ruled that she is what? An Almona? He, he dropped dead. He was alive, Gershom. Ah, it's alive. The way the Bez Yosef ruled in, in Tzvat. But in Krakow, the Bez Yosef doesn't decide reality. Who does? The Ramor, Ben Moise Israelish. 
So once he ruled that she's a widow, God took him out. The husband. She became a widow. Because God is not going to change with the Mermaid's reality. So therefore, right before she got under the chuppah with her boyfriend, the guy dropped dead wherever he was, somewhere in Casablanca. He got a heart attack in the nightclub. Remember Rick's, Rick's club? You the, you, right? Rick's. Too bad. No, it's some women. Rick's place in Casablanca, right? Well, he ruled that she's a widow. So God says, well, he said she's a widow. Then she's got to be a widow. But the one before who said that he was dead? The base Yosef ruled that she's still alive. But the Joyce is a Poisic and Nancy Soil. But once she took a slow boat to Krakow, China. not China, Krakow, Poland, <laughs> the remorse, the Poisic there, there's a new reality there. He ruled that she's a widow, so therefore she hasn't become a widow. This is testified by the Malach. The Malach, if you can buy this, it's been translated into English. So this is in, the remote, in the diary that he kept. Same people believe in black magic and Malachim. What? Same people. So reality, you create, a re halacha creates reality, positive and negative. Another case, after World War II, you read this in Igris Moshe, after World War II, there were thousands of agunois, Yehuda. Nebuch, they didn't know what happened to their husbands. Nobody, nobody saw what happened. Thousands of agunois, they couldn't, they went to Moshe Feinstein. He had break the plates. How do you say it in English? Break the plates. He was matir thousands of agunois. There's no proof that the husband is dead. But according to Ramosha, you know, trying to find coolest to let the woman remarry, he was matir, said, even though there's no body, I ain't got no body. He's dead, must be dead. Where is he? Didn't come back, right? So he released thousands of agunois. Once a woman came back, Moshe is giving a shear in the MTJ in Lower East Side, Evelyn. A woman comes to him, screaming in the middle, screaming, what did you do to me? What did you do to me, Ramosha? You said that I'm a widow and I got remarried and now my husband came back from Vienna. My kids are mamzerim, I'm on Eish What did you do? Screaming, screaming hysterically to him in the middle of his shear. Ramosha was a kind, very gentle person, never got angry, right? This is eyewitness to hundreds of Talmudim there. He gets up, and he turns white, and he says, Ligner, 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 Shakranit, you're a Shakranit, you're a Shak... He began shaking, turning white, if he was going to have a heart attack. He kept screaming, you're a liar, you're a liar, you're a liar. But Moshe never said a mean word to anybody. Always kind with a shmechel. He blew his cool, Evelyn. And he kept yelling at her until she broke down. And she admitted that what? She's lying. She wanted to uh, insult him because months before she had a dintoira with her landlord about back rent. And he ruled against her. And it cost her thousands of dollars. But she had a sikhsuk with the landlord. Ramosha ruled against her in favor of the landlord. It cost her thousands of dollars. So she admitted she wanted to humiliate him as Nakama. And therefore she made believe, Avram, that what? That the husband came back from the dead. So tell me they were shocked, Shelley. They were shocked. What is he, a Navi? What are you, a Navi? How do you know she's lying? Says Ramosha, I'm not a Navi. And my father wasn't a Navi. But I know one thing. Da mala mala mimcha. If you want to know what Hashem rules up there, it's mimcha. Once my Bezdin ruled that what? That she is a widow. She's a widow. It couldn't be that the husband is alive. Because da mala mala mimcha. Halacha creates a new reality. Once my best and ruled that she's a widow, there's no chance that the husband could what? But they could be alive. Them. So therefore, I knew she's lying. And she broke down. She admitted to humiliate him. 
But he kept shaking and calling a shakranich. How do you say that in English? Liar, liar, liar. The Tamida was shocked. The great Rebbe never blew his cool. But he knew this couldn't be. The Noid of Yehuda, Rabbi Yaakov, the Noid of Yehuda, Yechaz Kalanda, lived in, the, in Prague, Yehuda. He just came back from Prague. The Noid of Yehuda, the Posek in Prague. Interesting child. Again, a woman was a widow, uh, an Aguna, Zizel, for many years. And uh, she found a chusen, you know. So she went to the Noid of Yehuda, and he ruled that what? That she's a widow. She got married, Mazel Tov. The husband, the first husband came back. He came back. Ah, it came back. He really did? He, he really came back. The United of Yehuda said to him, you're dead. You're dead. If you're not dead, you must be a demon. Get the heck out of town. If my best didn't rule that you're dead, then you're dead, night of the living dead, or you must be a demon. Get the heck out of town. And what happened? And you get the heck out of town. Because otherwise we'll kill you. If I ruled you're dead, you're walking dead. The Noid of Yehuda in Prague, Yehuda. I visited the great Right? The Noid of Yehuda. If I rule that you're dead, you must be dead, or else you're a demon. Get the heck out of town, quick. Yes? I heard an opposite story from this was in Melbourne. I didn't hear it from him. I heard it from his son. Go ahead. After the Second World War, there was a woman who was apparently in Aguna. Right. And she went to this hall and said she wanted, she wanted to marry again. And she wanted the head that she could be married. Right, and she's in Aguna. So she went to the Bezin in Australia yes. to get a head that she's a, a widow. The Besson refused to give her a head there. Yes, and, 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 and I mean, she had somebody in mind who she wanted to marry. Right. And then the first husband turned up. Oh. He did turn up. So he never gave the head there. No. Baruch Hashem. You see that? Yeah. Baruch Hashem. So what happened with the marriage? And, you know, how <laughs> no, there was no marriage. He wouldn't give a head there because the husband was alive. But how did he know, you see, that Besson... Hashem gives siyata de shmaya. Hashem give look how Allah creates a new reality. Bitl chametz. What does bitl chametz mean? You nullify the chametz. It's a piece of bread, and you say it's what? Dust. Dirt. But it's a piece of bread. But a bitl makes it dirt. So you see, you create a new reality. It used to be bread, but now through the koyach of bitl, uh, Yonatan, it's now what? Dirt. The awesome power of a human being to create. What? To create Bitl Chomet, Shelly, what do you do on the air of Pesach? Pesach night, uh, and uh, the uh, Bidikas Chomet's night. Oh. Don't you say, call all Chomet's in my possession, which I have found and not found, shall become bottle. How do you say bottle? Okay. Nullified like dirt. And the next morning, when you burn the Chomet, you say it again. Chomet's that I didn't find. So even though it's somewhere, somewhere in my house, even though if it's there, Zizel, it's now what? I eat a loaf of bread? No. I turned it into dirt. The awesome power of halacha to change reality. So, did black magic exist? Of course it exists. But well, once Rambam ruled it doesn't exist, says Rav Hutner, he ruled it out of existence. It became what? Had to take, you know, the shade had to get out of there because. But if a person believes in black magic, or like Rivka said in Ayin Hara Lo for, for, him, for you it becomes real. You see the same thing with Stuyot, a person's sports. It's a difference what the Yankees do, what the Mets do, what the Jets. It, what difference does it make? But if you believe you put all your energy into sports, then for you it becomes a person, you know, his team loses. He's very happy. His team... The other way around. I'm testing you're awake. If your team loses, you get depressed. If your team wins, you become what? Exactly. Chava, why, why should you care? You get any more right? <laughs> what, did you, what do your team win or loses? Why do you get depressed or you get euphoric? It makes no sense. People kill themselves. Right? They call them a fan. A fan is, why is it called a fan? A Yankee fan. Fanatic. Fanatic, yeah. 
What difference does it make? Your team wins. Hey! They, in Pittsburgh, when the Steelers won the World Series, they went nuts. Right? And if you lose, you become depressed. Right? It's crazy. So you create your own reality. Or you take something sheker and you blow it up like a huge balloon, which is full of hot air. But for you, it becomes real. So that's how black magic works, and that's how what? Uh, besides black magic, stewed with sports, or any falsehood that you give it chios, you give it a life and becomes real, real for you. It takes over your life, yes? More absurd, there are people who used to watch soap operas, <laughs> and to them it was real life. They cried. You, you remember oh, Queen? Did you hear what happened to. Right. I, I like Stuyot, but that. You I remember the show Queen for a Day? Yes. Yeah, I oh, I, people would cry bitter tears. Queen for a day, no? I'm dating myself before your time. Queen for a day happened. These are stories, mice's stories. Boba mice's. That people, mamash, started to believe that was really happening. And for them it became real. They became obsessed and they were upset or happy depending on the stupid, uh, the ending of the soap opera, right? So what's the bottom of the With what? Of course they did it. The Torah says they did it. And therefore they couldn't duplicate the kinim because demons have no power over creatures as tiny as a louse. But when the Ramam says they don't exist, he meant from his time on. Once he, from his time on, I ruled them out of existence. Stop giving it koyach. See, the Mitzim believed in it, gave it koyach. The Ramam says, die, must speak to believe in that shtuyot. Don't believe in it, and it'll become what? No. False. So the Ramam is right, and the Vilna Gaon is also right. And you're also right. You know the story, right? It's good for Am Yisrael not to believe in it, probably. Of course. It's good for not, to not to believe in it, but if you believe in it, loyal lady, for you it becomes real. With the Shtuyot, right? And this is Rebbe Zachar and I in Hora. Yes? In some societies, if you believe you're cursed, you die. And they really die. It becomes real. That's it right. Real to them. That's right. You believe in it. I think it's called a self fulfilling prophecy where it becomes real. The shtuyot becomes real. And the person, you know, uh, <coughs> dies, right? The person believes in, in that. Uh, Rabbi Kiva Tatz, the great rabbi who from Ursameach, I heard this from his mouth, otherwise I wouldn't repeat it. But he was a doctor in South Africa. And he was, he was friends with a witch doctor. And he actually saw in his eyes how the witch doctor performed black magic. Because the victim and the witch doctor both believed in it 100%. He, he, he actually saw black magic. The victim was totally under the spell of, the, of, the, of this witch doctor. So this falsehood for them became so real that it became real. But if you wouldn't believe in it, it can't harm you. Ain't old milvado, doctor. What does ain't old milvado mean? The only true reality is Torah mitzvot. But a person can create a false reality, avodazara. The ultimate false reality, avodazara. That fake becomes real if you believe in it right so what's the bottom line mind over matter who said that Baba Cherebi said that how do you say that in English think positive think positive, positive. but chas when you think negative then that's the way it goes the awesome power of a human being to create a new reality like a Kodesh Baruch Hu, Kav Yochel. We create with our thoughts, like God does, positive or negative. Thank you very much.